give a victory speech, she didn't give a concession speech, neither did Hillary Clinton. Uh, and you have to wonder how you really prepare for a speech like that. Um, they probably had one of both prepared, um, but not nothing prepared for a tie. Uh, he did say that he has uh, created a political revolution, uh, so uh, he's now a revolutionary leader, uh, and he says that he is going to go forward. He's not going to apologize for uh, any of his proposals that have been described as pie in the sky by Hillary Clinton, by the Washington Post editorial board. Uh, he's going to keep going forward to New Hampshire, which is very fertile territory for him, Elaine. Uh, Nancy, going into tonight, was the Sanders campaign uh, in any way, shape, or form, factoring in the possibility of the situation that we find ourselves in now, this virtual tie, had that been one of the scenarios that had been even discussed? I, I think that both campaigns were prepared for it because in the last week, all the polls that we have seen had one or the other leading by three points, by two points. They were basically trading back and forth. And what that told a lot of people here on the ground was that they were essentially tied uh, within the margin of error. And so, you know, there was a little bit of, uh, you know, sampling error that went into each, each poll. And so they knew that it was going to be close. That's why you heard Bernie Sanders saying over and over and over again, if the turnout is large, we win. Well, the turnout was large. Uh, it just, just wasn't quite large enough for a Sanders victory. The Clinton campaign, interestingly, uh, Elaine, tried to sort of play the expectations game earlier tonight, and they sort of put out the word to reporters that they thought that they had won uh, and that they were feeling extremely confident. Well, um, they had to sort of reel that back or at least tone it down a bit uh, after everyone saw that really this race was within a couple tenths of 1% and it wasn't clear uh, when the race would be called, uh, if at all, tonight. Yeah, Nancy, that was going to be my question. What happens now? What are we all waiting for at this moment? You know, there's just a, a handful of precincts that are still dribbling in. Uh, and normally, it wouldn't come down to those last few precincts, those laggards. But in this case, it is. The challenge logistically is that these candidates have to get on the road or get in the air. Uh, they both have planes waiting to take them to New Hampshire tonight. They're trying to get out of town before the blizzard. That's one reason you saw them both come out and speak before uh, the race had even been declared. The other reason, frankly, Elaine, is because um, they know that people who are watching uh, this race unfold on television, online, um, might be thinking it's about time to pack it in and go to bed. And so they wanted to come out and speak during prime time, make sure as many people as possible were watching them, especially people who live in New Hampshire, South Carolina, Nevada, states that have primaries and caucuses coming up soon. All right, Nancy Cordes for us there at the Sanders campaign in Iowa. Nancy, thank you so much.